the creating helpful incentives to produce semiconductors, semiconductors, and science act signed by U.S. President Joe Biden in August, provides 52.7 billion U.S. dollars in subsidies for U.S. chip makers while outlawing the export of chips with a technology level of more than 28 nanometers to China for a period of 10 years. China would probably find it difficult to deal with the restrictions despite recent improvements in the production of NAND flash memory and the 7 nanometer process as the U.S. retains control over key chip technology, including lithography equipment and electrical design automation. Will China's desire to acquire groundbreaking chip manufacturing technologies be hampered by U.S. limits on chip exports to China? Let's find out. Welcome to our channel Technology Data. Please subscribe to our channel to show us support. The most advanced semiconductor technology is produced by American businesses. Moreover, it is easy to discover that American businesses provide practically all of the technologies used by PCs and mobile devices. Intel's core CPUs and Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors both have strong global sales, and PC enthusiasts all over the world are avid users of both but the situation right now doesn't look very good. Investor pressure on Intel has increased as a result of the company's shares falling more than 50% this year, in contrast to a $5 billion increase in net income during the same period last year. The corporation reported a net loss of $454 million in the second quarter, with an anticipated third quarter revenue decline of almost 15%. Analysts anticipate more bad news to be revealed in the company's next earnings report. For technical and scientific advancement, chips have become indispensable. Countries are chomping at the bit for top-tier scientific and technological prowess. Therefore, interest in chips is increasing exponentially. Having its chip industry in a vulnerable position, America begins to approach Chinese firms to buy their chips. In an effort to revive the chip manufacturing sector, the United States has invited Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company to build a facility and provided a $52 billion subsidy in exchange for their cooperation on $100 billion investment projects from Intel and Micron Technology. Taking a look at China, where integrated circuits have been made a first-level discipline and integrated circuit colleges have been established in major institutions, all of these efforts show that domestic semiconductors are improving. As a result, some chips are gradually introduced into domestic production, and production requirements are satisfied by the local semiconductor supply chain. Imported chips are becoming less common as more chips are made domestically. Chinese companies cut orders for 54 billion chips from January to August of this year. In recent years, as geopolitical tensions between China and the United States have risen, technology, especially in delicate fields like semiconductors, has been drawn into the conflict. The United States claims that China might develop cutting-edge military weapons using such sophisticated chips. China has selected a number of frontier technologies that it wants to develop its domestic capacity in, including quantum computing, semiconductors, and artificial intelligence. But with the new American regulations, that will be very difficult, especially concerning chips. The U.S. businesses initially intended to not be able to sell chips anywhere, but because they opted to follow the rules, they now have to deal with the repercussions. Unviable U.S. businesses are forced to choose between reducing orders and layoffs. Since U.S. businesses sold the majority of the chips to China, a variety of issues with their inventories started to emerge once the imports of chips were reduced. The important thing to remember is that the laws have an impact on how U.S. corporations sell their products and that not all chips can be sold. These unsaleable chips happen to be just what customers want. For good products to succeed, there must be market demand. The other chips that are transportable are not high-tech items. The pressure of destocking is most straining at this point because the inventory level has risen. In addition to Intel planning to lay off thousands of workers in this particular month of November, Qualcomm has decreased the amount of film production to some. NVIDIA has been inviting Chinese enterprises while selling an excessive number of graphic cards at affordable prices. NVIDIA's particular performance 
is that it promotes other items that are open to free sale and maintains that there are still a lot of things that can be offered. NVIDIA also means to invite Chinese firms to purchase other chips in order to guarantee sales and lower stockpiles. But what will happen to U.S. chip manufacturers? The steady domestic production of low and mid-range chips, along with a meager market for high-end chips, was something U.S. corporations did not anticipate. China's enormous consumer market is too big for U.S. businesses to ignore. Chinese consumers are the first to come to mind when trying to relieve the pressure on inventories because, in reality, most U.S. companies get one-third of their income from the Chinese market. In business, there can never be just one buyer or seller, but there is a sizable market for buyers, and under some circumstances, a seller can develop into a scenario where they make and sell their own goods. Chinese companies are increasingly creating, acquiring, and reselling semiconductors. Since Chinese enterprises are moving towards self-research in their chip development, the seller market will lose not only current sales, but also the future of the entire industry if the chips are produced independently. The conclusion is crystal evident from this vantage point. It is true that the rules are having a number of negative domino effects on U.S. businesses. If things continue in this manner, it might be more difficult for U.S. companies to destock efficiently. It is up to U.S. corporations to decide if they can survive. With that being said, we come to the end of the video. What do you think is the future of China and the U.S. in terms of chip technology? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and for more such videos, subscribe to the channel.